Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. No matter what you call it, a garbage disposal, a food disposal unit, a sink disposer, whatever it is, sooner or later as a homeowner, you're gonna need to replace one of these little beauties. Fortunately, it's not that hard to do. Stay tuned and I'll show you how it's done. Hey, Dirt Farmer Jay here from DirtFarmerJay.com. Your food disposer unit, as the industry calls it, uh, is a hardworking kitchen appliance. And like any other unit, whatever the price point is, depends on the features that you get. And less expensive ones are standard in most homes, including this one. But over time, we actually found ours corroded through. It had aluminum housing, and therefore, it was time to replace it. So. The bad thing about these kind of leaks is that can happen in quiet. And uh, if it wasn't for the watchful eye of Dirt Farmer Maggie, who saw water out along the edge of the cabinet, and wondered where it was coming from, and found out that that leak had developed and it was actually saturating all the items down below, she caught it early. But why is it that it's leaking? Well, these kinds of disposals have um, a unit or a whole housing down below. And just like anything in life, the more you pay, the better the quality, generally speaking. But if the lower end ones, and this is a lower end or moderate range one, uh, the housing in below there is probably aluminum and it just pitted out. If you pay more, even in the, the line of this company in Syncorator or Emerson, you're going to get a stainless steel unit that'll last a lot longer. So keep that in mind. All right, let's go ahead and do the repair, which in this case is simply a remove and replace with the new unit. These are modular, and so the parts that you're gonna get right off is the whole mounting flanges. This is what you see above and in the sink with the stopper right there. And then everything right at that line and below is under the sink and is the suspension point right here for the, uh, the waste disposer. So uh, I try to use everything I can that's already in place. And this unit, uh, which was already there from the old one, is still in great condition. There's no reason to take it and break the, the seal. So we're gonna go ahead and leave it in place. I am gonna harvest that nice new stopper though. And we'll go ahead and move this away here for right now. The second thing that comes with this uh, beyond that is also the waste tube assembly right here. So you have uh, this plastic waste tube, a gasket, a bracket that holds on it, the hard screws, but that's already in place in the old one. It's perfectly aligned already. So I'm gonna see if I can use that and not have to use this. Uh, if you're doing a new installation uh, and you need to do a little work around, this may end up getting hacksawed so that it connects correctly to uh, the tightening nut that's on the drain. Uh, and, uh, and all that, but we're not gonna do that. The other thing it comes with is this little um, offset Allen wrench or hex key. This serves two purposes. One, when you are mounting this ring up under the sink to this suspension area, you're actually gonna grab this like that and use that as a handle to twist that to tighten up on the ramps that you see right here. See those ramps running in a diagonal? They fit on that ring and when you turn it and wrench it around, it runs up on the ramp and three different points and tightens this up and creates a seal. That's one of the purposes. But this tool, once you're done with this, you wanna retain it and the reason for that, if you look at the bottom right here, there is a place to put that and I can literally turn the inside. Look right in the port. You see the, the plate there right there, rotating back and forth. The purpose of this is if you get a jam down there, you can reach in underneath, use this and wiggle it back and forth and uh, greatly increase your chances of not having to disassemble just by breaking things loose, running water through it. And of course you do this only after you've unplugged the garbage disposal. You do not want to have that turn on with this thing in your hand. Now lastly, another thing we need to do here is supply power to this. And you can see, as we mentioned earlier, here is a kit that comes with it, which is the power cord. And notice the configuration is just a standard outlet. You plug into a switched outlet below, which we showed you earlier. Now, again, 
Those parts seem to be in good condition, so we're gonna to try to harvest them, and I'm gonna take this back to the store and get my money back. Uh, but what's gonna happen here is you just look right here, there is an access area right there. The, the terminals um, that you can see right here get attached uh, into the lugs inside of this, and so, and then an outlet right through here with a Romex connector. Um, and all that is wired up and you can do that, it's very easily. Now, one other thing I wanna mention real quick while we get into it, before we get into it, is that they have also provided a very, um, how should I say, comprehensive set of directions and pictograms. So if I take it around here, and of course, uh, because these products are distributed internationally, they're gonna be in different languages, but don't worry if you're here in the United States, English is right at the top. There's also, I believe, Spanish, perhaps French. Uh, and But you can look in each one of these steps and you just walk through the steps and it tells you if you've already done this, you can jump here. But their pictograms are pretty doggone good. It's pretty hard to misunderstand what they're referring to. So even though I'm hitting just some of the highlights, uh, there's really comprehensive instructions that are provided to you in the box. Okay, well let's get going here. We're gonna replace this, swap it out. So the first thing we're gonna do is just get power disconnected here. Here's the cord that comes out of the bottom of the unit, plugs into an outlet on the side. Let's go ahead and undo that. So step number one is done. Step number two, let's go ahead and get the exit plumbing done. We're just gonna unscrew that right there. Back that nut off, what's called a slip nut. And then we'll go ahead, and this is called the P-trap, not because there's P in it, but it's the shape right there. And we got water coming out of it because it's on the low side of the trap right here. But once we get that done, then we can rotate this out of the way. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that there and let it sop up water. Okay, now we'll go ahead and remove the flange right here. And there we go. Now you're gonna take that, by the way, avoid the temptation of putting that in the sink above because it'll drain right back on you. I'm gonna show you what we're gonna be doing. It's a little hard to see up under there. This is the uh, ring that is holding the whole unit and we're gonna put the tool in here and rotate it to the left. Now when we do, what's happening is the flanges that hold it right there, which are on here, notice they're gonna run downhill you can see that slope right there, downhill, and the whole thing's gonna come loose and then we'll drop it off, okay? So that's what we're doing right there. All right, let's reach up in there. I've got my wrench. I'm gonna put it in one of the rings and I'm gonna hold onto the bottom and rotate to the left. I can feel it moving. I'm gonna support the weight underneath and there it goes, the whole unit. Now we've got these two units out here. Here's the old one, here's the new one. The goal here now is to harvest off this old power cable and we'll simply remove this uh, access plate, take out the terminals, uh, loosen this Romex connector and get that out. First thing we're gonna do, let's loosen the Romex connector. All right, let's loosen the and remove the cover plate to the electrical connection area. Here we go. Out we go. Number three, let's pull out the wires that are right here. And these happen to be wire nutted. So we'll see if we can do the same thing on the other side. And we are done, let's put that one away. Okay, let's go ahead and reverse our steps here. We're just gonna go ahead and put it in the Romex connector. Run a good tail through just enough to get it down in there. There we go, let's go ahead and screw that down in. We'll go ahead and tighten that up.
Okay, we're now ready with the electrical here to go ahead and reinstall everything underneath. All right, let's go ahead and get this installed. So the first thing we did is we took the power cord, tucked it off the side to minimize its interference. I also took the liner out of the bottom here because it tends to catch on everything and wad up. So let's just remove irritations and distractions. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna orient this roughly in the position we need, raise it to the clamp fixture, which is like this one, up at the outlet of the sink above. And as we point out before, you have ramps on these, three different ramps that climb to the right. So when you put this affixment ring on here and rotate it, it's gonna to start to climb that and clamp it tighter. We're not gonna drive it all home on the first um, round here because we want it loose enough that we can adjust it to line up the discharge tube, the P-trap, everything to the household drain. One other thing here, these are fairly heavy. I'm going to go ahead and one arm it. We'll see how that goes. But if you have somebody here to help you that can reach around the other side and help lift it, that's a big help until you can get that ring to grab on. But we're gonna go ahead and give it a shot. Here we go. We're putting this right in line. Put this right here in line with the flanges. And then we're gonna rotate it to the right and let it start to clamp on. And you can see I'm, I'm now mounted there. So, but we're loose enough, I can rotate this around. So let's go ahead and get the P-trap connected up and then we'll finish that tightening. And this does not require wrenches and that sort of thing. There's flanges on this that get you the right amount of tightness. Uh, it's up to you whether or not you want to put a wrench on this, but I can get the tightness I need on it. There we are. We're together here. Now, let's go ahead and finish up tightening up the retainer ring at the top here. We'll go ahead and put our wrench in up here and then rotate this to the right. And when you do, that really cinches that home. I go ahead and do it on a couple places just to make sure that we've got equal pressure all the way around. And now we are tight. Everything is tight, ready to go. Let's plug it in and then test it. Here is the moment of truth. We've got the water running. We have the food waste disposer running. And let's see if we were successful. We'll take a look down under there and see if we've got any leaks. Looks like we hit a home run. Well, there you go. I love it when a job comes together. To keep your disposal unit in top-notch shape and to keep it operating well, it needs to be kept clean. Grease and oils and ungrounded up food particles can build up there. It can get really stinky. Well, check out this video where we tell you how to kill disposal stink fast. And while you're at it, take a look at this other video that YouTube thinks is in your mind is the best for you. Take a look until the next time. This is Dirt Farmer Jay from DirtFarmerJay.com.